Good evening and welcome to the workshop meeting of the Wethersfield Town Council. Today is the May 6th meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councillor Breton. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councilor Breton? Here. Councilor Forrest? Here. Councilor Hurley? Here. Councilor Pina? Here. Councilor Lesser? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. Um, before we begin the meeting, I'll tell you that the proclamation on National Bike and Walk Month has been uh, postponed to our next meeting on May 20th. Uh, before we start with public comment, we do have a sign-in sheet. If you would like to speak, you must sign up on the sign-in uh, sign sheet. Um, if there's anybody in the audience who has not done that and would like to speak, if you'd please come up here and sign up, we'd appreciate it. Um, and before we move into public comment, I would like to just make a brief statement. Um, I'm grateful that the the Hartford State's Attorney did release the video um, this, this past week. Um, it, was, it was a terrible tragedy what happened in our community um, and our hearts go out to the family. Um, as I've said before, um, our, we, are, we have our sympathies to the family um, and the video was difficult to watch for many people including for myself. Um, you, you know, it showed the dangers as they unfolded on April 20th, and these are dangers that our officers um, face every day in the line of duty. Um, I'm hoping that as a community, we can all um, take a step back and allow the state's attorney's office to conclude her investigation. Um, and and it's, it's maybe a long process, we don't know yet, but it, we have been told it'll be a thorough investigation. And um, at this time, that's where we are as elected officials, we're awaiting that, that report. Um, also, I'd like to just clarify for some people who aren't sure how uh, the town government works in Wethersfield, uh, the mayor and the council members are all volunteers. The um, town of Wethersfield has a town manager council form of government, and our town manager oversees the day-to-day -day operations of our community. Um, and then lastly, we, um, we are holding our monthly workshop meetings, so we do have business to attend to. Uh, members of the public are allowed to speak for up to five minutes. Um, you will need to sign in with both your name and address on our sign-in sheet before you are able to speak. We have uh, eight people who have already done that. If there's anybody else in the audience who would like to speak, please come up and sign up here. Um, uh, we, we will not allow profanity or of offensive statements or personal attacks to be made. Um, and that we ask members of the audience to be respectful of the people who are speaking um, and refrain from shouting out while others speak. Um, you will be asked to leave the council chambers if you are unable to follow our meeting protocol. Uh, the first person that we have speaking is Catherine LaForza. You may come up. Lucky to be the first. Catherine LaForza, 190 Brimfield Road. Um, I'm here uh, to stand in solidarity with the family of Anthony Vega and express my condolences to the family um, for the death of their, their son and their uncle and beloved uh, relative. I, um, am, I have so many feelings it's hard to put into words, but I'm disappointed, I'm angry with the response from our town. I, I really feel like so much more could have been done. Um, this whole tragedy should have been avoided. Uh, once again, I'm here to request that, um, you know, we consider, the town consider a police commission to provide better transparency and oversight of our police department 
and um, also to open some community dialogue because Weathersfield has a problem. And whether the problem is reality or perception, the problem is real. And uh, there are issues here that need to be resolved. We are a neighbor of Hartford. People from Hartford come to our town. We go there. We move back and forth between uh, Hartford and here. But the perception for that people uh, of color know is, and feel is that Weathersfield is not safe for them. Um, I, this book came in the mail as I was going out the door. I have a brief little thing that I want to read, and it's called Small Kindnesses. I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull their legs in and let you by, or how strangers still say bless you when someone sneezes. That's a leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we're saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. But harm was done. And out of that harm, we need to find a way to address the issues that are real, that are tangible, and that can help this town be stronger, be more connected to one another, um, because right now we're fractured, and, and it fractured in an ugly way um, that makes me um, sad and ashamed to be a resident. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, next, we have Meg Scheibel. If there are members of the public who would like to speak and who have not signed up yet, please sign up on the sign-in sheet. Meg Scheibel, 29 Woodland Street. Um, I had to write it down because, like Catherine said, there's a lot of feelings and passion going on, so I'm going to read what I have written. I'm here today regarding the April 20th shooting of Anthony Vega by Weathersfield Police Officer U Ulysier. I think that first and foremost, our elected officials before me tonight need to reach out to Anthony's grieving family to offer their condolences. A statement at a public meeting is great, but what have you done personally? It's the respectful and humane thing to do. I offer my condolences. Secondly, I think an independent investigation into the Weathersfield Police Department and its practices and policies specifically in regards to racial profiling needs to be done. If we all truly want a safe town for our neighbors as well as our residents, then we should all be in support of the police department being transparent in its practices and internal affairs. We should support improved training in mental health care for officers, including nonviolent and de-escalation techniques, as well as addressing over-eagerness to draw weapons and use excessive force. The council and the mayor are well within their power to open an investigation per section 314 of the council code. Weathersfield is notorious for racial profiling and this type of investigation can hopefully provide the council and police department with concrete steps to address this issue and help our marginalized residents and visitors feel safer spending time in Weathersfield. Related, the council should look into establishing a board or police or commission for the police department Many other towns in Connecticut have successful police commissions that help ensure transparency in the department. I would like to be clear that I'm not standing up here anti-police, but I do think that the Weatherfield Police Department has a reputation amongst people of color and this needs to be addressed before another young person is shot at a traffic stop or anywhere else by someone who has been hired to protect and serve. The council should also denounce the behavior that Police Chief Satran has exhibited during this entire ordeal. He has laughed at and smirked in such a way that is reprehensible and disrespectful to Anthony Vegas' short life and the family and friends he leaves behind. This behavior is unacceptable. This is not an issue that will just be forgotten about in a few weeks. We as residents should demand action and oversight and continue to ensure that the police department is taking part in fair and just practices and policies. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Linda Grippo. My name is Linda Grippo. I live on 75 Fairlane Drive. Uh, I came here to uh, talk about the budget 
but it seems that there is a lot of people here who came here for different other reasons. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that um, I've lived here for many years, over 50 years, and I've seen a lot of changes done in Wethersfield. And um, we accepted different changes in the town and different changes in our budget, and we accepted those changes to um, really help our community, help our school, and to be a really good town for people to come to live. I um, did some research about the mill rates. Of course, you must all know that, of the surrounding towns uh, that are much um, lower than we are. And um, I've been trying to figure out why people would come and live in Wethersfield when they know when the, real, when the um, mill rate is so high. So when you go through your budget committee and you go through all your different um, items that you need to look at, and find out what is more important and what do you think it is accountable for the ways that you might be accepting for the town and going for a mill rate of over 40, 41 points or 41 mill rate. And I hope it's for good reasons and not for things that were promised two years ago when we built this high school, and when there was a lot of money that was involved there. Or there was other uh, contracts that had to be um, looked at and had to be accepted. So I really am not too pleased with the mill rate being so high. And I came here, I'm hoping to see that you uh, council people would look at this mill rate and decide what is best for the community. And even though they might say it's a one point mill rate, it's a lot of money to people who are on fixed incomes like myself. I like Wethersfield, it, it really has been good to me. It has um, a lot of positive feelings in the town. And maybe one reason why people like to come to Wethersfield is maybe the school system or maybe other things you have to offer. But if it's by chance that you can think of maybe not raising that mill rate this year and just look over things that might be important to everybody who lives in Wethersfield, especially the seniors who have attributed much to have Wethersfield a well-known town. They've worked very hard. They put a lot of effort into building the town, but now it's your responsibility to know what is best. And right now, 40 mills is quite high. And uh, for the surrounding towns, as I said, I, I am very surprised that it has reached so high. And I just hope you look at that you look at the budget and you just look to see to maybe not to raise it this year. Let the uh, town manager, Mr. Evans, know the community, know the people, know what things are important to make this community better, but not raise the taxes. So I just hope that you just look at that and, and hopefully the next article that I read in the paper that um, you'll stand up for what's right for the town and for the people who live in it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Kenton. Town Council. Uh, my name is Michael Kenton. I've, uh, I live at 50 Harvest Hill and I've been a lifelong resident of Wethersfield. Um, I am strongly urging you to, 
the town council to immediately terminate Officer Lehu um, and Officer Peter Salvatore for the killing of Anthony Vega Cruz that was unjustified. You have subpoena pro power to pr prosecute, so I'm appealing directly to the council to pursue laws and regulations that enforce stricter controls on police, including police, uh, including a police commission. The police chief has only exacerbated this tra tragedy and needs to be fired as well. This police terror needs to stop now. Weathersfield needs to make efforts to build relationships with communities of color. And I ask, what is your plan? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Rose Pish. Good evening, uh, Rose Pish, 35 Center Street. I don't know enough about the events of April the 20th to make a long statement tonight. However, I will um, make a short statement. And that statement is that as I traveled back from Florida last week, it was with a really heavy heart. I had been have receiving texts from friends and, and neighbors about what happened here in Wethersfield. And I had hoped that our town would not be in the headlines with a situation like this. And so I come before you tonight, um, not without any profound statements about what happened, but to ask you to please consider having an independent investigation an independent commission, permanent independent commission, perhaps a civilian review board. There are a lot of industries that do not have life and death situations in their hands that are subject to review. Uh, look at your utilities. Your de Department of Public Utility Control provides extraordinary oversight of everything the utilities do. They do not have life and death situations in their hands like the police departments do, and yet they have constant thorough reviews. Um, the, you look at the uh, insurance industry, they too are subject to an extraordinary amount of review by the insurance commissioners. And, and there are probably a lot of other industries that have that oversight as well. So for us to have a department that um, has life and death before it on an everyday basis to not have the ability for an independent uh, review by uh, some lay people in addition to experts um, and an independent review of exactly what happened on that night, um, I, I think is due to all the residents here. So um, I thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. Next, we have Tom Mazzarella. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walkett Hill Road. I'd like to speak a little bit tonight about the budget discussions that have been going on. <clears throat> I, uh, generally speaking, I believe that the, our town spending should be distributed equally amongst the various consumers, let's say. And with a town of 26,000 people, I'd like you to keep in mind that we have 3,600 that are in a school system, yet we pay the majority of our taxes, tax dollars go towards the school system. 60-something percent, I believe, we're at. A roughly uh, $17,000 per student per year to educate them. We're one of the higher towns in the state on cost per student to educate. I do not believe there's any correlation between dollars spent on education and performance. And that was evident in the recent presentation that you received from uh, Mr. Stoli. Uh, there's a lot of areas in town where we're not meeting the marks. We're certainly not excelling 
in all remarks. Some are actually going down. Rather disappointing to see when we're spending that kind of money. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, fortunate to attend some of the budget workshop meetings. Uh, the last one, uh, Mr. Emmett, the superintendent, was presented with a request to come up with some scenarios of possibly reducing his budget. And of course, we, we all knew what was going to be on the list. The first things on the list was, we're going to have to cut some teachers. We'll cut eight teachers. We'll cut freshman sports. We'll cut lacrosse. We'll cut the fall and spring productions. All the hot buttons that all the parents are going to be up in arms about. Uh, what he didn't talk about was some of the overhead that's in the school system. If you look at the total number of employees in the school system, about half of them are, are not in the classroom. They're not teachers. They're administrators and everything under the sun. Um, I attended, uh, I looked at the, I tried to look at the whole school system and it's obviously more than a one week task. But I did start looking at the Weathersfield High School. Back when I attended Weathersfield High, the population was about 1,400 students and it was comprised of 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Uh, I had 465 in my graduating class. Now, <clears throat> years later, we had to put a very large addition on that school. We didn't have enough room. But there's 1,100 students now. There's less students. Yet we needed more space. We needed $85 million worth of improvements to have a, a nice state-of-the-art high school, which is great. I started looking at some of the some of the positions that are filled. There's a, there's a superintendent, there's an assistant superintendent. Do we need to have an assistant superintendent? I don't know. Why not knock one of those positions off that are $150,000 or $200,000 and you save four teachers positions? Going down further, you have directors for all kinds of positions. I, I happen to notice guidance counselors. There's eight guidance counselors for 1,200, 1,100 students at the high school. When I was there, there was three. What do we need, more guidance? I, I just don't see it. That goes in all kinds of areas in spending. One of the things that caught my eye was paper and copies, 10 million copies district-wide for the, for the high school, or for the Board of Ed. Ten million, $42,000 in copies. There was also a line item of $42,000 for paper, copy paper. I think that's a duplicate. Um, when you go through that budget line by line, there's all kinds of errors. One of the things that bothered me greatly was um, mileage stipends. <coughs> There's 30 something people that get mileage stipends. They don't have to drive the car, they don't have to report their mileage, yet they get paid for it. Mr. Emmett gets $7,800 for that. Your time's up if you Thank just. Thank you. I'll wrap, wrap up. up and be back later. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ed Peruda. If there's anybody else in the audience who would like to speak, please come and sign, uh, sign up on our sign-up sheet. Um, you will not be able to speak if you have not signed up. Anybody who'd like to sign up? Okay. Go ahead. Members of the council, my name is Edward Peruta, and uh, I'm here tonight and I probably won't get an applause when I'm done. Um, on Friday night, there was a protest in front of the Wethersfield Police Department. And I had an opportunity to speak to someone who was present at that protest. And in the conversation, which was very civil, and I considered very factual, I was informed 
<clears throat> that he had information that Anthony Vega Cruz Chulo, or AKA Chulo, had had a previous run-in with the Wethersfield Police Department approximately two weeks prior to April 20th. What I did was I filed an FOI request with Wethersfield Police Department and surrounding towns. And I asked the following questions uh, for documents. Are there any records of motor vehicle stops of Connecticut registration plate 484YOS? Number two, are there any hard copy or computer stored records of contact with 18-year-old Anthony Jose Vega Cruz, a.k.a. Chulo? I received the response uh, this morning at 11.33 a.m. It says, Mr. Peruta, in response to your FOI request, the Wethersfield Police had contact with Connecticut Registration 484YOS on April 2, 2019. I cannot comment further on this information as it is associated with an ongoing investigation being conducted by the state police. <clears throat> I'm here because I am a news junkie, always have been, always will be, and I have heard no one have any concern for an officer who's on administrative leave who was performing his duties and discharged his firearm at a vehicle which was being driven at him. Now, I had a camera from American News, was the first news media camera on the scene on the Southstein Highway. And I have followed the events that have been conducted by members of Moral Monday Connecticut and others. And I have heard people talk about statistical reports or investigations into racial profiling in the town of Wethersfield. Not one of those people has referenced the uh, investigation of the investigations conducted by, I believe, the Connecticut Chiefs of Police Association and the peer reviews, the PhD doctors, peer reviews of the way those statistics were uh, reported. Not one person has made any comment about, oh, every report says. No, every report does not say. That report was submitted to peer review and probably two years ago, I obtained a copy of it under FOI, and I now have copies under FOI. I have provided it to the local area news channels, and it just doesn't seem to leak out to the public. But like a previous person, I am going to read some things that I've posted and my feelings. And if I may, and if I run over, I'd like a motion to extend uh, suspend the rules so give me a couple minutes but let me go we're, we're going to cut you off at five minutes okay. you can come back and speak later if, if you so choose the following five facts and circumstances attributed to Stephanie Santiago can be found in at least one published news report at WFSB Ms. Santiago states that Cruz was attempting to evade police that's her word number two Stephanie Santiago claims that Cruz had no intent of hitting the officer. Three, Steph uh, Ms. Santiago claims that she told Cruz to stop. She claims that Cruz did in fact stop. She claims that Cruz then began to start up and keep going prior to the police vehicle being in front of the vehicle. I have the ability to take those dash cam videos and the private business videos and look at them frame by frame. I have the ability to zoom in and look what's going on. I know where the officer's finger was prior to the car coming at him. It was in a trained index finger out of the trigger guard uh, position. But I want to now address a 40-plus year member of your department, Chief Citroen. I'm going to finish. You've got 20 seconds I'm to finish, finish up. When asked within hours, within an hour after the incident, Chief, is it a justified shooting? 
he wasn't laughing at the shooting. He was laughing at the question from the news media to even think that the chief could possibly have an answer to that question on the night of the incident. And I will come back. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bernardo McLaughlin. My name is Bernardo McLaughlin. I am a Hartford resident. Um, I'm a member of my of our union's General Defense Committee, which focuses on police brutality issues as well as other uh, areas surrounding state-sanctioned violence. Um, we were out in the streets on Friday night, as you know, and uh, my main thing, main reason for standing before you today is to just simply repeat our demands of the night, which was we expect immediate termination of this police officer who is responsible for the homicide of Chulo. I think we we're very clear about that. And, you know, investigations are great. You should definitely do that. You should investigate and see what you can find. That We don't consider that serious, though. That's an effort to placate voices that are in our communities. Um, whether that's Weathersfield residents, Hartford residents, people from around the state. Um, I want to add personally that also that the police chief over here needs to be fired immediately as well because this is under his watch and this is under his regime. And it's clear to us from this incident and many other incidents that our friends and neighbors and ourselves have experienced firsthand. And it's clear to us from the actions and the words of the police on Friday night that this is not an organization that considers itself a public servant organization. This is a military organization. And it's clear to us that that type of organization does not belong uh, in our society as, as interacting with the public over driving infractions, things like that. Um, so there needs to be some radical changes with the Weathersfield Police Department. You need to demilitarize this organization immediately. Um, allow the speaker to speak, please. No, please will applaud. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that I am deeply encouraged by some of the people of conscience in this town. Uh, I have family from here. I have friends from here. And this is uh, a town that does have a, uh, some concern for the lives of people like Chulo. And... The reason I say that is because this isn't just like a handful of people that are concerned about this. This isn't just outside agitators like myself. This is people from across the state, from across the country who are concerned about this. And the, at the end of the day, we outnumber those who would see an unaccountable military organization gunning down young people like Chulo. We do outnumber you. And we're not going to be placated by these so-called investigations, and we're not going to stop at any point until we get justice. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Julie Montaneri. Yes, I live at 43 Motto Circle, Mayor and Council, and um, welcome to our new town manager. I did want to express myself this evening um, as a member of the community in regard to what happened in, on April 20th. I think like many people in our community, we have... Um, we're able to feel for both sides of this divisive issue. It's, it's really um, divided our town. And on the one hand, you can't, if you have one ounce of empathy, you feel terrible. It's, it's like the mayor said, it's gut-wrenching to watch that video and to realize that a young man lost his life. You can't help but feel for his family and his loved ones. And at the same time, while you're watching that video, you have to appreciate 
what our officers do in the line of duty. Uh, thankfully, there's not um, an incident like this every day. But to have to implement their training with the adrenaline pumping and the threats and the split-second decision-making that needs to be made, I can't even imagine doing that. And I have a great deal of appreciation for what they put on the line every day to keep the public safe, the public that was on the Silas Dean Highway that day on a busy Saturday night. So uh, it's a complicated issue. It's clearly not a black and white issue. And you can clearly be on both sides of the issue in wanting the dynamics to change. I also wanted to say that I, ex I appreciate the restraint that has been um, exhibited by the mayor and the council. I agree that it's wise to wait for the investigation to be completed. I think there's been a lot of uh, inflammatory dialogue out there. And for our leaders not to contribute to the, you know, not to add to the flames, I think is wise. I trust that when the investigation is complete, and I don't know exactly how these things work, I don't know if they come with recommendations or if it's up to you or the police department or who to implement um, protocol changes or recommendations, I trust, um, because I know all of you personally, I trust that you're gonna do what, need, what needs to be done to make our community safer for young people that live here and drive with a license, without a license, and for our officers that are on the street every day. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Robert Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Of course, I came down here to talk about budgets, but April 20th was an unfortunate day for a young man, and uh, we just have to wait for the investigations and whatever else is going on to know what happened, but uh, it was unfortunate. Um, as far as the budget goes, at the last town council meeting, I spoke about not having a budget book. I understand that the town has paid, well, somewhere in here, 90 some hundred dollars for budget material, which must include, I think, $9,400 for materials, which also must include this book. And there must be a pile of them somewhere, or I would expect to have a pile of them somewhere, because they weren't sitting here for citizens to take. In past years, they have. But I, I guess that's our transparency problem in this town. We just don't have it, and you have to ask for things. But thank you, Mr. Manager, for chasing me down the hall and giving this to me. As I did go through it, though, and right in the very beginning, when we talk about different scenario, different situations, and I commented as well on it without having <laughs> the, the new book, was what we call the um, renter's rebate. And what's the other one called? Uh, renter's rebate and the circuit breaker. And I was relating back to my old last year's budget book because it had that in here. But lo and behold, this new budget book, I can't find even the word circuit breaker in it. I can't find the word renter's rebate in it. So I must either, I'm a, I have to assume you took my advice over the many years of my complaining to eliminate it and you eliminated it. If I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, please show me in the book where it is. Because I think what you did, well, I'll have to wait for your answer. How is that? Anyway, it, it's, it's not, it's not too cool to look at one book and the other book and you see things missing. 
especially something that's a lot of money. I also remember and recall, and I didn't talk about it the other night, uh, week ago or two weeks ago, was Medicare B reimbursement to retirees. Our retirees get very generous pensions. And then on top of it, they also get the, what they pay in Social Security for Medicare B. They get a refund at the end of the year, twice during the year. As a matter of fact, um, they get a payment of $629 halfway through the year, and at the, end of the other end of the year, they get the other. The other $629, it equals somewhere in the range of $1,258. Something that nobody outside of government would get or I should say outside of government in Weathersfield. This may be one of the only towns that I'm aware of that gives this benefit. And I have talked about this for years at budget hearings and prior to, and it still pops up as a big expense. It's a lot of money that we shouldn't be paying because nobody else gets it. But we should really look at that. You know, I just recently got... You know, we, we're hearing about the teachers' pensions and how the new governor is going to be funneling out 25% to some towns of what the pensions are and as little as 5% to other towns, which I think is very inequitable. But what do you expect from Harford? But I, I, I have a page here, one single page, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how many entries or how many people there are on this page, but there's 590 pages to the teacher's pensions, so just like this. It equals a horrendous amount of money for teacher's pensions, and we're going to be paying 25% of what's being paid for pensions for the teachers this year, maybe next year. But then... After looking at 591 pages, I skimmed it down to Weathersfield. And, you know, Weathersfield has five pages of teachers Your time is who up, are Mr. getting... Mr. Young. Oh, madam, this is, a, this is serious stuff. You have about 20 seconds to finish up. We have five people from town of Weathersfield that get $100,000 and more. We have two that get in the $90,000 range. This is a yearly pension. We have 13 people who get money in the $80,000 range. We have 23 people who are in the $70,000 range. And it just keeps going on. I mean, this is the first page. Okay, thank you, Mr. Young. Your time's up. You can uh, come back at the it's end. It's always a pleasure, madam, to come down here and, and you know, ratchet jaw with you. Uh, and, and I know you're so serious and uh, you find all of this that citizens bring to you as so uninterested. Thank you, Mr. Thank Young. You. Um, our next speaker is Greg Brown. Uh, good evening. My name is Greg Brown. I'm not a resident, um, although I do work around the t uh, town of Weathersfield. Um, first off, I want to say thank you for allowing the public to come and speak today. I know that um, you have a lot of matters that are important to your town coming from your own residents. Um, but I just feel like it would be, you know, kind of messed up if we didn't pay attention to the events that happened on April 20th. Um, Chulo was a lifelong friend of mine. Um, I knew his family before he was born. Um, basically, first off, he was the type of kid where he's not going to hurt anyone. He would never hurt anyone. So watching the video, it just clarified what we already knew. If you actually paid attention to the video, you would actually see the officer running in front of the vehicle. The tires of the vehicle, and when he started to pull off, they were facing toward the right. 
the vehicle was starting to drive to the right. The officer already had the gun pointed in his face, not at the tire to stop the vehicle, but to stop him as a person from moving the vehicle. Now, I'm not an officer. I do, however, respect those who put their lives on the line to protect everyone in any state, any town, and it's just sad that one person can make you, your whole team, look like killers. Um, now, when you're talking about the stereotypes in Weathersfield, um, I actually was stopped twice within the last three years in Weathersfield. Once in Weathersfield, the second time I wasn't in Weathersfield, but I got stopped by Weathersfield police. Now, I am an administrative assistant, but on you know my downtime, I don't dress like an administrative assistant. So automatically, me being comfortable, I get stereotyped and categorized as what you guys like to, you know, not you guys, but you know what a lot of people like to say as hoodlums. Um, this situation has created a lot of hurt, sadness, and anger that I'm pretty sure a lot of you in here feel tonight, but there's an immense amount of people around the country who have reached out and expressed their feelings and concerns. Now, when I bring up this situation, I'm not pointing any fingers at anyone except for the guy who pulled the trigger. He had a decision to make, and he made that decision when he jumped in front of the vehicle. Not when he pulled the gun, when he pulled the trigger, when he jumped in front of the vehicle, he put his life on the line. The vehicle was in reverse. You ran in front of the vehicle. Before he could pull off, you put yourself in danger. Was he gonna harm him? No, pay attention to the, vi the video. Now, I understand that investigations are happening, but me personally, I would not want to be a resident of Weathersfield. I would not want someone who feels like if they have to pull the trigger, they're going to pull the trigger, but not for what the trigger is supposed to be used for. If I had a family, would I feel safe with my children driving around? Would I feel safe getting stopped in Weathersfield? No. You have a lot of stores, a lot of businesses, a whole strip, Red Lobster, uh, all, Silas Dean Highway is one of the like main shopping centers, shopping plazas, whatever, that I go to. I have to be careful. I'm, I'm keeping my windows down when I'm driving by now. I don't feel safe with my windows up. If it's raining, yeah, I'm gonna keep them cracked because if I get stopped by an officer who automatically stereotypes me, what am I gonna do? And this is not a problem just in Weathersfield. This is the problem all over. So basically, there's a lot of change that has to be made. There's a lot of things that have to be pointed out. And before you sit here and criminalize a person, you have to hold accountable the officers who made that decision that he did not have to make. The vehicle could have been stopped. He did not have to be stopped with a bullet to the head. Thank you. That, that concludes the speakers on our list. Is there anyone in the public who has not spoken who would like to speak now? Is there anybody in the public who'd like to speak? Okay, then we're declaring the public comment close. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. After you speak, would you please sign your name and address? Thank, thank you. <clears throat> Hi, um, my name is Kamel Scott, um, and I am uh, actually a resident of New Haven, Connecticut. 
Um, and I work for an organization, I co-run an organization called CT Core Organized Now. We're a statewide racial justice organization here in Connecticut. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because a lot of what really needed to be said was said. Um, and I want to just express my condolences to you and, and appreciation to you for speaking. Um, because I know it can be incredibly hard at moments like this to speak the truth. Um, one thing I want to make sure is said today um, is about the investigation process because um, as an organization that does racial justice work that has been involved in anti-police brutality organizing in the state for several years, we've been through a number of these investigatory processes and it's, it's like Groundhog Day. Every single time there's an incident in the state we hear, let's wait for the investigation, let's wait for the investigation. So let's talk about who's investigating. These are state police officers. These are police officers investigating police officers, and it is therefore illegitimate. So people who are calling for an independent investigation, um, I know there are a lot of demands stated here, and I can't say that I know exactly what the demands are, but I do support um, those who are organizing. Um, but I do want to point out that it is not sufficient, it is not acceptable to hide behind an investigation that has proven time and time again to be a dead end and at the end of the day a justification for abuse. I want to respond to the gentleman who brought up um, the prior arrest history. We're not talking about a history of conviction, we're talking about an arrest history. I, you'd be hard pressed to find, or not even, a, not even an arrest, I'm sorry, in, in, an interaction, right? You'd be hard pressed to find a person of color in the state who has not had an interaction with police. And that is in no way, whether it is an interaction, whether it is an arrest, or whether it is a conviction, that is in no way a justification for someone to be shot dead in the streets, for a police officer to act as judge, jury, and executioner. There is nowhere in this country in the history, well, there's nowhere where it's written down that that is the way that policing happens, but we know that that is the way policing happens in this country. So I think it's also important that we acknowledge how the system has been operating. We acknowledge that none of this is new. We acknowledge that this is not limited to Wethersfield. This is happening all over the state. Um, and I actually call on everybody here to really think, really study the history of policing in this country, the history of police brutality in this country, and the history of police brutality in this state and in your city, and understand that Chulo is actually, I believe, one of more than 20 people who has died at the hands of police in the state in the last two years, is it? So many of us have been organizing in solidarity with families, and we're going to continue to organize. I want to echo um, what Bernardo said, like we're not going anywhere because this is life and death for us. I'm also a mother, um, I have two young girls, and I worry for their safety, I worry for the safety of my children's friends, and for the safety of everybody in my family. So with that, I'm gonna close, because I don't wanna take up too much time, but I do want to recommend that everybody here, especially those on the council, research this investigation process, research how these things have gone in the past, and recognize that something different needs to happen and that entire system needs to be overhauled. And in no way is it acceptable for police to investigate police and for state's attorneys who have close relationships with police departments and police officers to be the final arbiter of whether or not this completely unacceptable behavior is acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Rue? <coughs> George, <coughs> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. There's very little that I could add to what was said tonight. Uh, and what surprised me were the number of Wethersfield residents who did speak and address this particular issue. What I knew about this, I only found out about today. I knew the incident had taken place. <coughs> but where I am age-wise, I'm pretty damn busy just with keeping myself together. So I saw the video tonight very briefly on my son's cell phone, and I have no opinions on it at this moment. I was very impressed, I want to share, I was very impressed with Paul Montaneri's letter to the community at large. I didn't agree with everything that he said. And I, I, I always have a little bit of a problem, personally, with, with the police, in that every day they put their life at risk. 
they may be called upon to put their life at risk. That's very different than putting your life at risk every day. The, person, the people who put their lives at risk every day are those soldiers that are in wars and stuff like that where the object is to kill you and you gotta kill them. But that shouldn't be the role of the police. And I think the, 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 the concern, that the, the thing that I would share with you is as you proceed in investigating this particular issue, be very cautious and be aware of statisticians or people who think they are statisticians and understand all of the fine points that go into uh, 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 research on statistics and, and this kind of stuff, uh, which can only serve as a detraction and as sort of an excuse in some ways or a defense in some ways as to why this was just a minor incident. It was a terrible incident. It was a terrible incident. And when you're 18 or 19 or however young he was, you're just a doggone kid. You're a kid. And there have to be choices. And I think the problem that we see, I, I never thought it would come to Weathersfield, but it's a problem that's happening universally throughout our country. This is not isolated here, it happened one time. It's happening all over. Are the police, in many, many cases, the police are really somewhat pretty much to blame. At least that's the perception that I have as I read the papers. So just with those thoughts, I'd, I'd like to just leave it go with that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Seeing none, we will close the public portion of our meeting. Um, we have no hearings on ordinances or resolutions. We have no presentations at this time. We'll move into councilors' reports from boards and commissions. Are there any council members who have to report on a board or commission? We've been in budget. Okay, seeing none. Um, we have no discussion items this evening. We'll move into council action. Our first item for action is a workshop um, item for referrals. Do we have any of those, Town Manager? Not at this time, ma'am. Okay, so we're gonna move into number two, spring paving program. Um, do I have a motion? To make a motion to improve the increase of PO2017-880 by $350,000 based on the aforementioned state awarded contract with Tolcon Connecticut Inc. Tilcon, that should be probably. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Town Manager. Yes. Uh, this is, a, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. This is the town's annual program for road improvement using the previously approved road levy tax or road tax levy. Uh, the town is piggybacking off the state contract, which went out to bid in March of 2019 to Tilcon, Connecticut, as the lowest responsible bidder. An affirmative vote for this item will allow us to complete the project with Tilcon as the approved vendor. Are there any council questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, item three, milling and uh, reclaiming. Do I have a motion? Motion to increase PO 20176879 by 25,000 based on the aforementioned state award contract with Tilcon Connecticut Incorporated. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, again, this is part of the town's annual road improvement program. Similar to the paving, the town is piggybacking off the state contract that came out in March. Once again, Tilcon is the lowest responsible bidder and an affirmative vote for this item will allow us to complete the project as the, uh, with Tilcon as the approved vendor. Any council questions on this item? Council Latina. Just a quick uh, confirmation that residents will get letters telling them that this is all happening to their road. Do we, yep. we do that, right? Yep. And I'll make yeah. sure of it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Number four, miscellaneous paving prep. Do we have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. I move to increase PO 201-76881 by 320 thousand dollars based on the previously awarded contract with general paving do we have a second second okay 
Town Manager. Sure. Thank you again. <laughs> uh, similar to the previous items, this is also part of the town's annual road improvement program funded through the road tax levy. If you recall, the council approved a short-term contract extension for general paving uh, based on a reduction of cost back in December. The affirmative vote on this will allow us to complete the paving for the 2019 year and ensure we capitalize on the spring construction season, assuming it continues to not rain for a period of time. Okay. More than a day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> any council comments or questions on this one? Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Just Gary to you is um, general paving is not necessarily <coughs> company that I'm thinking about but we have had a few paving projects in town over the last year or two that the quality has been a little bit dicey whether it's Garden Street or the um, the manhole covers which are pretty much sunken on Main Street and there are a couple other ones if you could maybe just share with Derek and yourself the concern about the quality of the work and just to keep an eye on that as it's done that of course these are big ticket items and we do want some good quality work on our roads so they last a long time. Yep. Yeah, and that typically was not general paving. Um, Correct. I, but, I realize that. But that we'll make sure. But it's a general keeping our eye on the quality of the work, especially yep. with not significant, you know, especially when we are spending millions of dollars on paving. So. Sure. Okay. I will take care of it. <coughs> Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, item number five, crack sealing. Do we have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Oh, Siri has a motion. <laughs> <laughs> motion to increase PO 201-76881 by, I'm going to read the wrong one, by 100,000 and execute a contract with seal coating ink based on the aforementioned CROG solicitation. Do we have a second? I'll second, but it's the wrong number. We might have one? to modify yeah. that. Oh. I read the wrong number. Did I read the wrong one? Yeah. Maybe just do a quick withdraw if you want, and then that PO. bring the PO back. back. Was it two? Oh, I go withdraw ahead. my motion. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, that a motion to increase PO two zero one eight six eight eight five by hundred thousand and execute a contract with Seal Coating Inc. based on the aforementioned CROG solicitation. And do we have a second? Second. Okay, town manager. Sure. This is the last for this agenda uh, in terms of the town's annual road improvement program funded through the road tax levy. We are piggybacking off of the uh, Capital Region Council of Governments bid solicitation that came out. Uh, seal Coating Inc. was the lowest responsible bidder. As you know, crack sealing helps extend the life of the roads and slows the deterioration of the substrate. So an affirmative vote will allow us to complete the project with Seal Coating Inc. by increasing the PO. Okay, are there any council questions or comments? Councilor Rell? Just to be clear, this is not um, the old style of uh, chip sealing or anything like that. I know years past we've heard comments from residents about the dust buildup. That's, that's not this type of sealing. This is true filling Correct. in the cracks. Correct. Okay, yep. just to relieve any fears that people might have about those uh, coming down. Is this the same company that did, um, I guess it would be Griswold Road. Uh, I know uh, Deputy Mayor Martino, you had mentioned a couple years ago that job was different than all the other jobs in that they put a pretty wide swath of sealant on that road and I think they did thorn bush as well. Um, is that the type of sealing that this is gonna be done or is this uh, smaller or minute? I would have to check on that. Okay. Um, I believe they're picking, um, I, I don't think it's the same back and forth, but they, there are, there's a certain amount of zigzagging or I think they call it alligator. Right. Um, but just trying to extend the life of what's currently. Correct. Uh, right. If they don't seal it, essentially you, moisture gets in, water gets in, whatever oil gets in and it starts to expand and contract and which deteriorates the substrate, mm -hmm. which will cause it to uh, uh, fall apart much quicker. Okay. Deputy Mayor. Uh, Mike, just to clarify for you, uh, this is the normal crack sealing process that we do every year. It's not the special thing that we did down the center of uh, Griswold. Mm -hmm. That was special to test it, and they'll probably come back to us on that. And this is not the old uh, mulch sealing that right. everybody was concerned about. If you remember, two years ago, we banned that for the mm -hmm. future. Yep. Yeah, that was the yeah. one that we received a lot of complaints about the dust. Right, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 
Last is the transportation alternative grant application. Do I have a motion? A motion to authorize the town manager to apply for transportation alternative funds in an amount not to exceed $2 million. S second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Town manager. Thank you again, Mayor. This agenda item is to request council's authorization to apply to the Capital Region Council of Government's transportation alternative grant. The grants uh, will capitalize on the existing state investments already in the proce in process in the town. This includes the Putnam Bridge project as well as several projects in Old Weathersfield. Um, this application will allow the town to connect anyone using the multi-use trail at Putnam Park to points in Old Weathersfield and throughout Weathersfield. The application looks to encourage alternative modes of transportation from a regional perspective, including connecting Rocky Hill, Glastonbury, and Weathersfield to Hartford. Um, an affirmative vote allows us to apply at this time. It does not commit us to any funds. Okay, are there any questions? <laughs> Councilor Harlan. Who picked these projects and not other projects? Uh, it was uh, several members uh, from a committee standpoint. We went through the existing projects uh, and determined what would qualify, what wouldn't. And we determined there was a piggyback opportunity since the state was already investing in point A, point B, and point C. And we had to have a regional collaborative. We needed to connect point A, point B, and point C. And just from experience around the group, it was what has a larger aptitude to get approved. And the group was town staff? Town staff, correct. Okay, thanks. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Manager, is this something we apply for every year? No, this is, this is relatively new. Um, the funding source is actually the federal government. There's no, uh, there's no uh, allocation of funding at this time. It's in preparation with the assumption that funding will be available. That funding will go from the federal government to the state. The state will then allocate it to CROG, and they're looking at maybe three projects. So the estimated timeline, um, if it approved, is really fiscal year 21. So it's not... It comes up probably every three years or so. When you say uh, three projects, is that throughout the state that they're looking to? Throughout the region. Region. Yeah. So our odds of getting the grant, would, it's hard. To, I don't want to put a number on it. Yeah, I'm not going to calculate it. But no, but it's. Where's Michael? <laughs> um, but there's a significant chance we would not get the grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. It's, it's highly competitive. It needs to be a million of a half, a minimum of a half a million dollar allocation uh, application. Uh, in conversation with staff, though, we see it as an opportunity to build our capacity for a future application which may come through other state resources. And this is just to approve the application? To this is just that. allowing us to apply, correct. If we get the application, they'll come back with a Thank you. request. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Okay. Councilor Rell? Do we, in, there's a state project that's connecting Weathersfield to Glastonbury right now through the Putnam Bridge? Correct. Do we know the cost? For that project, I believe we're at 9.5 million. And is that uh, shared between Glastonbury, Weathersfield, and the state, or just the two towns, or just the state? I don't think that's coming. Any of it's coming from our funds. It is all state. All state. At this time. And it's not any of this up to two million dollars. Nope. Nope. This would actually extend the area. So um, <laughs> from the Putnam Bridge, we'll call it the landing area down Great Meadow Road around the corner to connect Marsh Street. It would also reduce, um, right now Hart Street is one way heading in the wrong direction. It's extremely narrow and you don't have the ability to expand the road because of wetlands on one side um, or actually wetlands on both sides. So you can't encroach. And there's a safety hazard as people are walking or biking from that area to connect to Old Weathersfield, which forces them basically to the side of the road. So. This would expand the width of the road. It would provide sidewalk space as well as shared space for a bu for a bicyclist. Okay, thank you, yep. Councilor Harley. One more. So this is eighty and eighty percent funded, and twenty percent would come from the town. Correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments from council? Okay, seeing none. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, we are now returning to public comment. Members of the public may have five minutes to speak. If you um, wish to speak, um, if you would just sign your name back onto the sign-up sheet. And if you're a new speaker, your name and address to the sign-up sheet once you've uh, spoken. Yes, please. So we know you've spoken again. And it is a five minute rule. Again, 
again, my name is Edward Peruta. I need to give some a little bit of rebuttal. I read to you the response in an email that was given to me at 11.33 a.m. today. Um, I have been doing my due diligence to try and find out as much information as possible. A woman from New Haven came to the podium, and I believe she was referencing when I said that there was an interaction with that motor vehicle plate on April 2nd. Um, Weathersfield, Hartford, and I believe Newington share what's called an LPR system, License Plate Reader. And that system you spent a lot of money to implement in, our, in your police department. And it's my understanding that uh, it wasn't simply a interaction because there was no interaction. My sources are telling me that on April 2nd, an attempt was made to pull over 484YOS because of the tinting of the windows and the time in the early morning hours. Didn't know who was driving it. Could have been a five-year-old. But when another one of your officers got out of his vehicle and approached 484YOS, that vehicle took off in the night. And because of the darkness, by the time the officer got back to the vehicle, he couldn't see it anymore. And because of the, and I, now I'm going to go out and kind of go off and think. On April 20th, there was a gag order or an order that nobody talk about the incident. That would include the manager, the mayor, the police chief, uh, police officers, couldn't talk to each other. Not, not a lot of people had a lot of information. When the video was released by the state's attorney on Friday, I can only imagine that somebody sat at home looking at the early dash cam video from District 5's car and looked at the plate 48. For YOS and said, whoa, wait a minute. I know that plate. Now, I, 48 years ago, was a Weathersfield policeman. And Weathersfield police officers are hired to enforce the laws. They are hired to protect the residents of a community. And they are hired to use their gut instinct and, and, and things that come to them when they're out on patrol. Something caused the need to run a plate. The plate comes back not belonging to the vehicle. The vehicle in the video that I'm looking at is heavily tinted. And I'm going to tell you, I've looked at every frame. The front wheels of the car are in none of those frames. And I've stopped and I've looked and I've extended that one second to five seconds so everybody can see it, and I've posted it. When the initial confrontation starts, the vehicle is stopped, the officer is in front of the vehicle, and then the vehicle accelerates. <clears throat> Misuse of plates, Timothy McVeigh got pulled over for not having a plate <laughs> on the back of his car. It was a routine motor vehicle stop got arrested because there was a bulge in a handgun. And it took about 48 hours for the FBI to realize that Obama or the Merle Federal Building was in a county jail. The Monday following Saturday, a 16-year-old unlicensed operator from Windsor in an unregistered, uninsured car was shot in Hartford at Albany and Sigourney. Hmm. The family said he was out maybe driving for Uber, but he didn't have a license and he was 16 years old. Shortly thereafter during the week, an unregistered dirt bike in the city of Hartford collided with a pedestrian. During that week in the town of Newington, a Newington police officer pulled over a motor vehicle that had misuse of plates and found out that the operator had an arrest warrant for a shooting in Stratford, Connecticut. Police officers are supposed to look, analyze, 
be suspicious, what's going on, I got to find out. That's their job. Misuse of plates is a violation, tinted windows is a violation, and the way that vehicle was hauling ass up the Silestein Highway, it went into reverse 180, went into the driveway, and well, risked everybody up. on the road. I'll wrap seconds. up, Mayor. Thank you. But I'm just sitting here saying that I have been listening to one side of this issue, and I understand why nobody can talk. But I figured if nothing else, I'm going to say what a lot of people are saying and probably don't want to come here and say it, or they're talking privately. Thank you very much for your time. I'm all done. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella, come on up. Good evening again, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I'm uh, a little bit disorganized tonight, I'm trying to figure out where I left off. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, not to do with the budget, but uh, the grant application that you just applied for, I think it would be helpful for everybody concerned, especially the people voting for the grant application approval, is to find out how much does it cost the town of Weathersfield to prepare one of these grants. I know there's got to be some significant amount of work. Uh, uh, maybe Derek has to do some engineering sketches or things of that nature. And, you know, a lot of effort can go into a grant that may or may not ever materialize. So I think it would be helpful, you know, are we spending 10 grand or 50 grand or 2,000? Just something to think about. Um, Getting back to the budget. In the uh, Board of Ed budget presentation, there was a page that summarized personnel services salaries. And on that total, it says total personal personnel services salaries. It shows a 1.3% reduction in salaries for this proposed budget. When you factor in the positions that have been transferred to the town, basically the custodians and maintenance staff, and then look at the comparison of last year's budget to the proposed budget, we're looking at a 5.867% increase, not a decrease of 1.26. The, the budget as presented to you is just full of misinformation. You can put numbers you can arrange numbers in a number of fashions to give the illusion that we're saving money, that they're doing all they can to pinch pennies, if you will. That's not the case. It's almost a game with the Board of Ed. Two years ago, they changed how they categorize all the accounts so that you couldn't take the prior year and compare it because it wasn't apples to apples. And it was explained to us that, well, in the future, it's going to be better. Well, now they've done other things. If you look at stipends, for example, athletic stipends, in the previous budgets, they had each stipend position laid out, six grand for this, eight grand for basketball, and so on. Now it's all lumped together in one number. So it's 140,000 for uh, fall sports, 140,000 for uh, winter sports, and so on. You can't tell what's changed. We're told there's 30,000 in there for lacrosse, but you really can't tell what that number <laughs> is. Going into the stipends. The stipend money is my opinion is it should be offset by the pay-to-play fees that athletes contribute. Uh, each athlete has to pay a fee. And there's some caps so that if, you know, a family has six kids, they don't have to pay a fortune if all of them want to play soccer, things of that nature. That money, those stipends are in the town of Board of Ed budget. That money, when they collect that money, it's not represented in that budget. There is no revenues listed in this budget that you saw. That money is deposited into a off account, off books account called the student activity fund. 
and all that money gets funneled into that account. I believe the money from fall and spring productions, ticket sales, also goes into that account. You won't see any revenues in the Board of Ed budget for ticket sales for those fall and spring productions. What you do see is 50,000 plus in stipends for the people that put on that, those two productions. I don't know where they get them, maybe Broadway or something. Uh, that's just an absurd amount of money and it's not represented in here. Now, one of our concerned citizens has taken the steps of, of researching all those student activity funds and it's a staggering amount of money and it gets spent on all kinds of places. We even saw where stipend budget money from the Board of Ed budget was funneled into the student activity account. And it seems to be going back and forth. It's almost, I don't want to make accusations, but it appears it's almost a hiding place for some extra cash. Wrap, wrap it up, please. I think you're making that clock go too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I want that calibrated, please. <laughs> All right. It's not in the budget. <laughs> it's in there, believe me. Everything's in there. If you spend enough time looking and it's boring, it's in there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Young. Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Tom is so right about the, the expenditure side of some of those expenses, yet the revenues are flowing over into that student activity fund, something that nobody wants to look at. And as I looked at it, I saw some things that looked pretty bad. But you really need to have a lot of time to do more with it. But anyway, let's get back to this budget with the town Board of Edu the town and the Board of Education. It appears that, it, it appears that there's a seven, seven million dollar transfer coming from them, the board, to the, the town side. Yet, we're seven, the town side is seven, seven million dollars high compared to earlier year. Yet, the board side is only down a lot less than what the seven million is. Matter of fact, they only show that 1.5 million. And there's a, and this might have been a great opportunity for the town, the town to push money over into the Board of Education, and it probably was a good opportunity for the Board of Education to funnel money back into their organization without anybody really seeing too much of it. It's just the, the shiftings and, the, and, the, and the whatever you did here ends, I mean, you should have had equal. Like I said last time, you had $7 million up here, you should have been $7 million down here in the negative, reducing their budget. Instead, you only went down 1.5 million. And there's a lot of hidden money in there. Um, I guess they got a lot of good favors from you folks, okay? How else can I think about that? Anyway, I looked at, um, oh, there was an issue in the budget book. Does anybody have the budget book? A, page A2? Nobody has it, nobody gives a damn. It's at home. I notice, I notice in here under adjustments on page A2, you have uh, allowance for court decisions. Last year you had $3,070,000. This year you have $12 million in there. And then of course you got the elderly's local exemption, which is not the circuit breaker and is not that other thing. It's something totally different. Reducing, making, making some wild adjustments, throwing money's way off. But I, I think we should have an explanation about that $12 million. Tom spoke, and I spoke last time about the coach lacrosse, uh, coach, the coaches for lacrosse, that stipend money, uh, that, 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 that shouldn't be happening. And again, 
the expenditures are on the board side, but the cash that comes in from the students that come in with all that cash is not being shown up in your statements. And I think you should go back and look at that. It's not honest what's going on here. You know, the, 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 town, the superintendent spoke about Chromebooks purchasing outright one million, one thousand four hundred and forty one Chromebooks because you said the lease that you had currently wasn't economical. Uh, I think it was just a thing to say to get to pump up more money into his budget as the phoniness that we have going on with this with this budget. And and I think if I don't know why it's uneconomical to have leases. You folks constantly lease. Or is it uneconomical? And you continue to do things uneconomical. You know, the, the city, the, the city, the town of Weathersfield is loaded with people of all different calibers. And, and we have a lot of poor people. Tom has talked about the, the group called Alice. 34% of our citizens, they can't handle this 5% increase. Even us people that work can't handle this, this <laughs> increase. I recall not more than a couple months ago when Mr. Forrest was talking about, oh, the, 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 the change of the mill rate is going to keep our mill rate below $40 a, a thou, uh, per mill. Where are we? We're at 41 plus. His theory was wrong. But of course, when you pepper the budget so heavily with extra charges in there, you, of course you're going to be up over 41. And, and, and that's why we are where we are. Um, the school system hey, your time's up, really so needs to up, be please. looked at. And, and I really wanted to talk about some other issues too, Mayor. What, my time is up again? It is, sir. Your five minutes are up. My time is up. You know, I wanted to talk about these... Uh, these pensions that we're going to have to pay for at the state level. You know, I've been seeing where it's 425000 or so that we're going to pick up. I, I don't think that's a true number. Uh, the pension numbers that I saw for Weathersfield were a heck of a lot more money on an annual basis. And we must be only going to get, what, 5 or 6%? Okay, your time's up. Time is up. Thank you, madam. Always nice to come down and see you. Anybody else like to speak this evening? Come on up, Gus. We can have Dolores write your name. She knows where you live. <laughs> Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. I, I don't know, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but it's, it's sad every time I think of you guys, you know, it's just, where are we going? <laughs> every year things go up. Taxes keep on going up. Uh, talking about you guys do, do the, the crack seal, <laughs> crack sealing, you know, you do it and this and that and who's going to, before you do a mill in an overlay, you do some pre prep work, I guess, and who's going to check it? It's, it's uh, 10 employees. Oh, my God, I said. Uh, but something came to mind. You know, when they did uh, the work on my street, they did a lot of driveways. They were supposed to seal between the old and the new driveway. Well, they never did it. There is a crack there now. Should the town do that? I mean, you know, if it's detrimental to the streets, and it is. I was an engineer before uh, I got laid off. It's detrimental to my driveway, too. How long is it going to last before it's really going to come apart? And do the town employees, all of them, they really know what they're doing? Not all of them. 20% do 80% of the work. 80% forget it. Still, a lot of things that were done wrong on that street. You know, the pavement was supposed to be four inches. They installed two. They had to come back. The existing pavement be behind the proposed curb was supposed to be removed, not just the asphalt, but the pavement consists of bituminous base and sub-base. 
when you remove or you build pavement, that's what it consists. It's just like a house. A house, it doesn't have just a roof or the first floor or second floor. The house consists of the basement, first floor, second floor, the attic and the roof. Not in the pavement according to 10 employees, I guess. Let's talk about this taxes keep on going up all the time, pension. You know, uh, not too long ago, my wife uh, retired and, uh, and I had to go to whatever they call it, part A, part B, you know, and I pay about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 more a year. And, and, and state or like, you know, uh, 10 employees that they are retired, they get reimbursed. This is a tragedy. When is it going to end? I've been here since 1973, and every year the tax has been going up. I am on Social Security for the past 10 years. I haven't really got much of anything at all. I know, George, you don't like this, but I'm just making statements. I'm not crying. I'm just making statements. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. I mean, you know, when you're thinking about that, basically people retire in government, and then they make more than when they were working. There is something wrong with the system. You know, I get $77 a month from my job. $77 a month. And out of that, now the state gets $4.50. And I get Social Security. A lot of the people that I went to school with, and I don't think they were any brighter than me, but anyway, they got to work in government they make two, three, four, five times much more than I do in retirement. And I ask why? It's because of the freaking unions and it's because of you guys that you do not do your job. You do not really represent the, the residents of Wellsfield. Now, I'm surprised that basically they have a food, a food share program someplace in Wellsfield. Does that bother you at all? If you go 30 years ago, probably they did not have anything. Is it because the tax have been going up and the, and, and the salaries have not gone any place? Is that the problem? I mean, 5.36 or 5.6 percent, don't you think it's too much? I think it's too much. Where does it go? Nobody knows. Every year they get more. And they say, oh, well, it's contractual agreement. Every year it's a contractual agreement. And you guys don't have enough guts to do anything at all. I'm sorry. But the more I get to know the job you do. And you know, uh, Martino, Mr. Martino, you know, you vote on this budget and this and that. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that, that you know in town. Can you really vote against it? <laughs> to me, it seems that it, it doesn't make too much sense. Not it's legal, but I don't know if it's ethical. Thank you very much. I got three more seconds. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Gus. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up, Mr. Rue. Oh boy, this is this is much better, it's much more entertaining than sitting at home watching TV. <laughs> but anyway. George A. Rue, 956 Clovedale Circle. I think it was a very serious toned meeting tonight, and I hope that my elected officials heard much of what all of what was said. And I can certainly relate to the concerns of people of color. I can really relate to that very easily. And that's a different perspective than I had in the past. Anyway, that said, uh, I, the only reason I came up is I hear you talking about fixing all the roads and the streets. On, on, on Cloverdale Circle, in front of this house called 956, <laughs> there are about three cracks that run from my curb clear across the street. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and the crack where the... Where the, where the road meets the, the driveway, which the, the general uh, paving there, general contracting, whoever did it. The, the only reason I bring it up is if that road was five or 10 years old, I'd say, hey, that's not par for the course. But that road was only done at the time the pond was done, and that was two years ago. And it just strikes me that in two years, we should not have, our streets should not have cracks that go from one side to the other. And it's not only in front of my house. There happen to be two or three of them there, but I noticed up and down the street there are more. You might just want to take a look at that as you go sprinkle whatever you do to make them go away. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Anybody else like to speak? 
Okay, Ms. Town Clerk. I have three uh, emails that I received today. One from Casey White, one from um, Megan Hartline, and uh, Clara Sin Everson. They're all um, in comments in supporting to have um, it, um, an outside investigation for the police and policies and procedures of our department. Okay, and you'll put that into the record. Thank you. Okay, we. I believe the meeting is. I believe we are have no other items on the agenda. There's no executive session. So we can take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. So I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you and good night. Thank you.